everybody. Welcome to Improv FAQ at Length. I'm James Quesada. And I'm Bob Wick. And this is a series of longer conversations about improv topics that have lots of questions surrounding them. Okay, so this episode is going to be one of our new ideas for a type of episode, which is a show and tell episode where Bob and I share stories of shows that we've uh, been a part of or developed and what we learned from those. Um, and the topic of this one is going to be a show I directed called The Elastic Time Canon, which I'm very excited to talk about. Yeah, I'm excited to talk about this too. Um, because I don't know how we've known each other. I would say about 10 years now, right? And well, there was yeah, been a we, lot well, of crosses. We, we, just, we just had a, a Facebook friend anniversary, right? Well, yeah, yeah. That's... Do you remember how many years it was? Oh, no. I'm, <laughs> I, I'm... I think it's 10. It, it must be 10. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It must be 10. And a lot of the projects we worked on, there we've, we've had a lot of crossover. Like, there was a lot of pictures of you and me. And you, me, and Gary, there's a lot of crossover. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but this is one of the projects you – you have worked on. Uh, I wasn't any a part of, but it was a really great project. And I've been always curious, but we, we've never really talked about like the history or, you know, or like the concept itself. I, I've, I've seen the show. I love the show. I've, I've watched it many times. So I'm really excited to talk about this. Yeah. And so the way that these episodes are going to go is that um, we'll start by giving a description of what the show is, and then we'll talk about the story behind how it came to be, the work that went into developing it, how the show run itself went, and the audience response and stuff like that, uh, and then the major takeaways, um, as well as if if we had to do the same show over again now, what would we keep the same and what would we do differently? So for starters, just to give an uh a show description on what the elastic time canon is. Yeah, give me the elevator pitch. <laughs> so, so the tagline of it is a show that uh, ends the show, a show that begins, ends, and keeps going at the same time. Um, and uh, basically, it's a show that plays around with all these different concepts of manipulating time. Um. And things go forwards and backwards, and there's causal loops uh, and pendulum effects, and all all these thematics um, to the to a highly structured long form show um, that are centered around uh, manipulating and, and and bending the perception of time. <laughs> um, so. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so there, it's it's like there's like a five part show, and just to loosely describe the structure, it's it's like the uh, the opening um, group game. It's a large cast show. We had a, a cast of um, uh, eleven. I think twelve would have been including me. Um, the few times that I played, um, and the opening group game was a game that called Simon Eyes, uh, where one person from the group would step out and initiate what's supposed to be a two-person scene, gives the first line of dialogue. Second person um, would come out, but before they give a second line of dialogue, the first line would get repeated. The same delivery, the same physical movements and staging. Um, and once that first line's repeated, you add a second line of dialogue from the second person. And before you add a third line of dialogue, you repeat lines one and two verbatim, um, and so on and so forth, where before you add any lines of dialogue, you repeat what you already have. Um, and inevitably, this thing falls apart uh, as the group starts to tag in and um, switch themselves into the yeah. two character roles. And they keep the same scene going on this growing loop uh, on that pattern. And once mistakes are made or uh, you start leaning into you know, uh, ways of delivering the lines or whatever it, it just uh it, it intentionally at some point goes off the rails and uh breaks into this big organic group game of uh wherever it goes um and that's just the opener so that's one high concept yeah. just opener of the show well that's what i liked about the opener that like stuff like inflection and you know mistakes and or there would be moments where two people came up you know, at the same time and started speaking at the same time. So there's always those cool interactions uh, and everything was respected and, and it grew from there. So it would, it, it, uh, you can tell that was a polished uh, form, but because of its mechanics 
mistakes were made because of the speed and just the interactions. And it, it made for a really interesting opener. Yeah, thank you. And and I, I, I loved it. It's one, it's one of my favorite parts about the show is just uh, that that opening sort of um, it sets the tone of, of what to expect from right. the show. The rest of the show, for the most part, is um, three separate scenes that all stem off of the same uh, first line of dialogue. Um, and they, they uh, separate sets of characters and, and uh, separate context and everything like that. But they all use the same first line of dialogue. Um, and then it's 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 like a ongoing mono scene uh, in real time with those three scenes. Um until they eventually, the idea by the end of the show is that they come full circle. Um, in Act Two, you jump back in time and then work your way. Each scene works its way back up to the same initial line of dialogue, and all three scenes end on the line of dialogue that they started with. Uh, and then you do the, the opening game in reverse order with the same lines of dialogue being retracted one at a time, all the way down to just repeating the same line of dialogue so over and over almost again. Almost like an onion. Kind of yeah, like an onion, but but with dialogue yeah. and just stripping yeah. away one line of dialogue at a time. Yeah, that's awesome. So let's start from the beginning because I, I I would like to get to the point where we talk about your first rehearsal and you breaking it down to everybody and the look on their faces. But before <laughs> that, you had to initiate. Like, how do you come up with this concept? Is this something based on like your forensics training, or is this like a Frankenstein form that you you took like? parts that you you like from other forms because i do when you were describing it i i can see what you're talking about in in pieces of other forms that we do participate in so how does this start yeah so the backstory on it is that i in uh 2016 was planning to move uh, out of Detroit, and initially my plan was to move to Chicago, and uh, for a number of reasons, it's just it it didn't work out. A, a job fell through. My credit wasn't great enough to or or bank account to secure an apartment, and um, I ended up not being able to move uh, that year. Um, and uh, but I had already kind of like amped myself up f to move, and so when I when I didn't move, and I was like, okay, I'll, I'll give it another try in a year. Um, I was like, if I'm gonna stay and be here another year, then I need to not just sit still. I need to figure out what my next challenge is so that I'm still growing. And, um, I had really loved highly structured forms like, uh, improvised Shakespeare. And, um, also in Chicago at the annoyance, there's a show called trigger happy, um, yeah. which, uh, is highly structured and there's like uh, verbal and physical cues that uh, trigger certain events amongst the cast. And I, I thought it was a really interesting um, next level concept for a, a way, something to incorporate into an improv, a long form improv show. Um, and there's, there's other shows like that, but I, I basically was like, okay, what's my version of a show that is um, that high concept equally as impressive as it is funny and, um, that's the bar that I wanted to go toward it. Um, and I wanted it to be something that you couldn't do without rehearsing. Um, yeah. and that's so a great at, goal. yeah, yeah, that, that's, that, I was yeah. like, I, I, and, and then the, the other element was that, uh, there, there were all in our group in Metro Detroit improv. Um, there's all these people that are on multiple troops that are basically different combinations of the same people. And, uh, the overcommitted people who, who are just like, I, will say yes to every group and every show. Yeah. And um, I wanted to see if I could offer something that would take all of that uh, loose energy and take those people and put them into a show that demanded uh, most, if not all of their energy creatively go into uh, making this one show as great as it can be. Um, but beyond that, I didn't have the concept or the, or the form laid out I just had, uh, I decided to, to lead with three things that I wanted to work on or, or, or that I knew that I wanted to involve in a show. One of which was uh, repetition. Um, I loved opportunities in long form shows to just straight up repeat moments or scenes that it would happen uh, every so often. Uh, Pete and I have come up with uh, short form games that involved um, loops and, you know, uh, reverse dialogue and these different branch you know, new choice 
pathways. Um, and so repetition was one of them. Uh, yeah. Clown. Really quick. Yeah, go ahead. Where, where does that come from? Like, what 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 is appealing about that to you? Like, where does that? How's that? Where how's that born? <laughs> I don't know. I, I and I think that's part of the reason that I wanted to uh, to dig into it more is is because I just it, it it feels like something that that is like has this magical quality to it that I'm not yeah sure that I that I can point to and I wanted to explore it more. Um, and I, I I don't know. I thought I think I think that it's just it's funny. <laughs> no, that's great. Yeah. And you know you know what maybe the, and this is something that I learned through the process of of the show is that like I love. My my like more recent um, artistic statement for myself is that I love to create shows that um, have the same positive side effects as uh, mind expanding drugs uh, to create like a psychedelic uh, trippy experience in in All a right. show. Um, and uh, and yeah, that idea of repetition and absurdity just has that element to it in a, in, a, in a unique special way to me. That's amazing. And you nailed it. So great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so another, I'm sorry. I cut you off. The second part was. I'm yeah, so, don't worry. I, so, I, so, I cut please. you off twice. My bad. <laughs> I, and and th th this show uh, is so is such an exciting still uh, such an exciting concept to me that I, I am right. going to just like barrel through. So please feel free to interrupt with questions because I, you know, I'll, otherwise I'll just go off the rails or uh, without without yielding. <laughs> um, I got you, buddy. No worries. Uh, the second element that I knew I wanted to incorporate was uh, this idea of clown and these like meta elements of um, audience engagement and uh, of, of real moments that was, was the, was the thing that I was really most fixated on is like being caught in a moment of, Oh shit, or aha, or discovery, however you want to think of it. Um, the real, the experience that's happening to the real person when you r r try to get up on stage and, and your your foot catches on the edge of the stage and you go, oops. Um, right. Th that's a real experience that happens in improv a lot that we uh, sometimes gloss over. Sometimes we make really great use of it um, as a gift. Um, but other times we just kind of move forward. And and, and I think in the, in the world of clown, one of the things that's really special about it is that you want to... Uh, capture these really authentic real experiences that's happening to the real person and uh magnify them and stretch them out as much as possible so i wanted opportunities to do that too um is is how i'm applying the idea of clown in this case um really and, quick and, yeah so uh, is this is this right after you get back from chicago and you and gary took the clowning class is that why I this is such uh, a big influence at this at this time, or no? That, I think I think uh, that might have been. It was probably more recently than I, than I'm remembering it. It might have been a year okay. or two, because uh, this would have been like like summer ish, go, like spring going into summer, um, that I started just the seeds of the Elastic Time Cannon show, and uh, one or two summers before that is when Gary and I went to Chicago for a physical theater intensive. Um, and so I don't know about the timing, but definitely that experience of going to, to a, a five day intensive of, of physical theater left me wanting more. One of the days uh, focus was clown. And that definitely uh, opened up a whole new world of possibilities for theater and improv and comedy for me. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, whenever it was that we did that intensive, I, I still haven't stopped looking for opportunities to find more and more of it. Uh, no, no. I, I remember do. when you guys got back, I, I wouldn't say it changed the way you played, uh, but it did emphasize some things, you know, like and, and a playfulness to it. So, yeah. Yeah. I, that I playfulness. That. I, yeah. I, th I think I think that's what it really is, is that that particular sense of play on a meta level what's happening with the real person on stage, regardless of the context of, of, of it happening in the fictional world of the characters is what I wanted to explore in some way in the, in the show. The third thing, uh, which also has to do with that, that intensive, but, but is something that I've always loved, um, since ever is, uh, is physicality. I just wanted more physicality in general, um, big group physicality and staging and movement 
to be incorporated into the show in a in a more drastic way than most of what we're used to in in my experience with with improv yeah yeah that's something we don't focus a lot on like the the big group movement you know we, we get a lot of lectures of you know be physical on stage you know do your object work and and i'm, I'm just talking about detroit like i don't re- i don't remember really doing or focusing on uh let's if if we all get together we can lift one of us you know uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah which I, is fun yeah <laughs> i think i think there's much more focus on um standalone scene work which is a great thing right. and uh character and um less relationships emphasis and, on yeah, yeah uh, strong relationships uh even even game and and like heightening who what where th- those uh scenic contextual things are more emphasized yep. in the detroit community than the surrealism and abstract and organic group game kind of stuff um uh that you might see in, in other shows yeah. um so so yeah so so that's a story of how it came to be that then uh going into it um what i the in developing it the approach was to take those three things and uh figure out a list of exercises and games that uh, we already use or play um and start start workshopping them with a group of people and uh the cast was um i i had just gotten i just finished coaching a a troop called future kids which was the uh launch group or the um kind of auditioned for up and coming improviser uh house team that gets a year run and and that's once a year um you know it's a big round of auditions and then that team goes uh who there's eight people that get cast and then go on for a year of weekly shows i had the opportunity to to coach that group the year before uh and so that was the future kids and i um started by letting giving them the heads up because i uh wanted to again keep keep growing and i wanted to be able to uh continue that shorthand that we had built with anyone that was interested in in taking on another big commitment of a of a show um but the difference one of the major differences in the way that I approached this show as like a sort of independent um, project uh, was to set the schedule first. And because I wanted it to be a show that had that impressive element and challenge element um, and uh, uh, just be a show that you had to rehearse, that was important to me to, to, to set those goals first and be like, we're going to do yep. two rehearsals a week uh, and two hour sessions um, and we're going to do that for 10 weeks. Um, and really we just rehearse as much as possible based on people's schedules, uh, up until the goal of running the show, which was, uh, in like late August. Um, and so the, uh, about half of the eight person team from the future kids were able to do it. And the people who weren't, um, unfortunately, you know, we just had to uh, make peace with that and be, and be like, man, I'd love yeah. for you to be part of the show, but if it's not doable, it's not doable and uh, no hard feelings and that's it. And it's like, that's yeah. a, it's, it's such a difficult thing to do for people that you really, really want to work with. Um, but one of the, by the end of this, the, the, one of the main takeaways is that how valuable that is to, to lead with the schedule and the goals of what's necessary to make the show meet what it, is what it takes for the show to get what it needs yes especially in an overcommit culture you have to hey if you want to be a part of this i would love for you to be a part of this and just like you said like especially for two a day or two weeks like i'm gonna need you every time you know and like you said this i've seen the form you're going to have to rehearse this you know uh to, to keep keep up so yeah yeah and, 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 uh, and so, so then once I had a, a handful, then I, uh, again, just looked at the people who were doing, uh, probably too much with uh, across too many teams, uh, that were really right. eager to, um, artistically challenge themselves and, uh, uh, put together a, a 11 person cast of those people. Um, and then, uh, we, yeah, we started, we started rehearsals once we had everything firmed up and the, uh, the the initial pitch that I gave to everyone was pretty much what I just outlined to you, 
<laughs> and then <laughs> and then I was like, uh, there's a there, my favorite book is a Kurt Vonnegut book um, called Sirens of Titan. And in that book, there's um, a this like rich millionaire or billionaire or whatever uh, who's caught in this um, sci-fi phenomenon called a chronosynclastic infundibulum. <laughs> I was like, oh, you didn't want to use that for the title of your show? <laughs> oh, I, oh, I did, Bob. I wanted to. I, I, and, I, and I was like, so the working title of this show is oh. the chronosynclastic infundibulum. We will probably find a, a more digestible, spellable right. name than that. But that is the working title of this uh, show. Uh, that and that's the sensation that I want to give is that you're in, you're caught in some sort of uh, yeah. uh, a cosmic time spiral. <laughs> um, that's amazing. I didn't. I never knew that. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I always thought it was kind of a long title, like, but an appropriate title. And it, it really, I love titles that explain what you're about to see or, or give you like a heads up. Like you're, you're walking into something that plays with time. Awesome. You know, that's all I need to know. I don't need to, a full explanation, but you know, here's a heads up. And if you can see something interesting, uh, pay attention. It's going to get weird. Uh, totally. Yeah. So that's cool. And I actually, I have to give credit to PJ, uh, for nudging me to come up with a better title than than the ones that I had, because <laughs> as a group we also discussed a title and we kind of had like a, I would narrow down some options and then I would vote and I, we would also ask like friends of ours uh, just to kind of like blind not blind test but you know what I mean be like uh, what show are you more right, interested right. in seeing this one or this one, um, but uh, I presented the show title now we'll go later. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is it's fine. It's cute. But it's and I was cute. yeah. And we were set on it. We were like, well, we love it. And I submitted it to PJ and he was like, I, I think you can do better than that. Make it sound cooler and and make it sound more of a of a spectacular think carnival or, or circus and um uh and 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 get back to me. And he he and then and then almost immediately uh because PJ and I sometimes will butt heads on, on little nitpicky uh, things yep. of, of producing a show. Um, but almost immediately, and, and I, f I feel like I almost uh, came up with it out of sarcasm, uh, but then I was like, oh, what about the Elastic Time Cannon? And he was like, uh, we'll see. Let me know if you come up with anything else uh, afterward. And... <laughs> And, it, and 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 I never did. I was like I was like after after a, a, sitting on it for a week. I yeah. think that's the best title of the show, and I think it's cool. And he agreed. I, I do think it's cool. I I really thought I was gonna. I just had a flash in my head. I, I told him the title, and he loved it. But no, no, that no, wouldn't no. Be the, That wouldn't be the PJ I know. He was like, "That's better, <laughs> closer. Might even be it. Get back to yeah. me in a week." <laughs> um, that's awesome. <laughs> but yeah, so so the. the then from there, and this is another really important uh, takeaway f for the show development in my experiences, is uh, I had those three elements that I wanted to work on and a list of exercises, um, and then this group of uh, excitable, super talented people to work with, uh, and it really became a workshop with those improvisers um, to, to tinker with these different qualities and figure it out together. And, and, and it was uh, much more collaborative and less um, prescriptive than anything I had done previously. And I uh, thought that that was a really special quality of it as well as, is, um, one, everyone's willingness to try things and be go into uncomfortable, weird territory that might not work. Um, and also to uh, feel encouraged to uh, give input and ideas and uh, that that if they're willing to try anything that I come up with, yeah. that I'm willing to try anything that they come up with too. Cool. Uh, is that something you had to cultivate or is that something that was just, you just got lucky and that's how the, the troop was from the get. Uh, I think, I think a little bit of both because um, okay. the, the the combination of people that uh, ended up being the cast um, were friends really comfortable with each other to begin yeah. with. Um, and, um, and also I, are all people that I had worked with. So like trusted me too. Um, yeah. and 
then I and then I but also I did set the expectation that that's what we were going to do is that like I'm not sure what this show is going to be I know that these are the elements I want to work with um but and then and then asked for that level of trust and uh willingness to try things so so th that, that but I think I think it's you I, I would be hard pressed to do one without the other I think <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> yeah yeah I get it um so yeah, uh, and then over the course of of uh, of, of building the show, uh, we just sort of narrowed down all these different things that we liked and whittled it down and, and started to kind of piece together um, a uh, a picture of how we wanted the form to flow, um, which was really great. And I remember I remember like one story that sticks with me is is like. Uh, we were doing like warm ups and pattern games uh, and very mathematical stuff because we were training our working memory. And um, it's it's a very interesting skill set to workshop by itself is just like tracking information and reordering information. And I was coming up with all these really challenging ways to do that, to push ourselves. And um there were times when it would get really frustrating and, and understandably. Yeah. And then I would be like, I'd be like, guys, remember, um, this is what we set out to do is challenge ourselves. And we knew that it would be frustrating at times. Um, but also remember that this is the point where a lot of people choose to ease up or, um, end up plateauing. And the more, and, and when you plateau, it becomes harder and harder to get back to a place where you can step outside your comfort zones and really challenge yourself in this way. So let's take advantage of this opportunity. And that really like helped people be like, okay, let's go for it. And then I remember, um, Maggie, uh, said to me after, um, cl closer to the end of the, of the rehearsal process, she was like, uh, you know, we do day in the life where we interview an audience member, um, and then, uh, uh, do an improvised recreation of, of their day. And, um, uh, she was like, I was never really good at like keeping track of information. Uh, it was either Maggie or Katie. I, I can't remember, but, but somebody said that, that, uh, they were never good at that game before. Um, but found it much, much easier to remember like people's oh. kids names and like what, what, yeah. you know, what they were saying they have for lunch or what their job is and coworkers and stuff. Uh, and then apply that in the, uh, improvised recreation of the day. And I was like, that's cool yeah. <laughs> that you can like Working see, out new see, muscles. Yeah. Yeah. You can uh, see, you can see the skill, uh, yeah. developing. Can I, can I get an example of an exercise that you guys are using or, um, yeah, yeah. So there's, if you uh, remember. yeah, yeah. Well, Simon, I was, was one of them. We did, we did, a, uh, oh, okay. So, so, uh, we also did, um, this game called, uh, like a warm up called frame shift where, um, you would pass around, uh, a pattern of words and then you would drop the oldest one, um, and add a new one in, in a pattern. So it'd be like, if it was, if we're keeping three uh, at all times, three three words in a pattern, it would be like uh, truck, car, plane, and then you would drop truck and keep car and plane, car and, plane. and then add pool, uh, and then go uh, car, plane, pool, and then drop uh, the oldest one, and then go plane, pool, swim, you know, and so so you're always, you're, and then you would do that with different numbers. Um, and, uh, and, and also in different themes of, of, uh, patterns. Um, but that was one that we would use as a warm up, And then we would do, um, things like old dog, new tricks where, um, that's a short form game where, uh, uh, three, three, pe three players, two people are on stage doing a scene and one person off stage, uh, the two people doing the scene um, exchange lines of dialogue one at a time in a, in a normal scene. Um, it's very short. It's like six or seven lines of dialogue. And then uh, the host would bring the bell or whatever trigger uh, would make the offstage person tag in for one of the people on stage. The person who remains on stage repeats all of their lines of dialogue from the old scene that they just did. And the person tagging in now adds new lines of dialogue in between 
uh, the old lines to to recontextualize or ma- manipulate whatever and um yeah, and we would yeah. we would we would do that game as as a as a, a three person game we would also do it as a as a line game we would also try to do it as like a uh, long form edit move mm-hmm. and try to just find different applications for it um for the idea of like if you stay you, you repeat everything and if you join you add new things knowing that you might be the one to stay next and have to repeat everything that you you are adding as new. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, and I also have a hard time like even talking about it because I know I know how heady it is, and um, I, I try to like find the best way to be clear about what the um, description of it is. But that's part of the frustration that we would run into is is like what the fuck are we doing here (laughs) and and sometimes it would just be a matter of like what what is the goal what is the can we get on the same page about what we're trying for uh let alone whether or not it's going well (laughs) like uh so yeah those are a couple examples that's awesome so where we go from here from here so so what i got we'll move to when when we when i launch the show um yeah uh the run was really great. Um, I was very excited about it, and so was the cast. and And they really just they crushed it. And um, I think that we really delivered on on what we set out to do. Um, and uh, one of the things that I wish I had done is uh, celebrated the accomplishments of the show more. In the it was like an eight week run that we did, um, and. Uh, I, I, and eased up on the notes. I I would still run backstage after the shows and kind of be like, awesome, awesome, right. awesome. Ooh, if we can just like tighten this or like or like explore that more. Like ooh, you know that that one moment where like yeah. we almost got to that. Uh, and and like let's look for that next time. And and it's just like it can be deflating um, to right. work your ass off and do a great show. Um. And uh, I could feel uh, a couple times I, I, I had to take my uh, I had to take a step back and, ju- and just be like, I, I think I just ruined yeah. um, a really good post show hang well, with y- stupid you do notes. the same hard notes to yourself, though. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So I yeah, hope you yeah. take the same advice. <laughs> I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to, I need to learn to celebrate and just let, let be what yeah. it is. Uh, and then wait to, uh, move to the next stage of progress and criticism and whatever right. it is. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the show, I, th- I th- one, a couple really fun things about the show run. Um, we had, we had a really structured intro as well and like theme music and light pulls and stuff uh and and the the music we used was uh all electro swing it's this um infusion between like uh uh uh, what do you call it glitch glitch hop uh like electronic remix um kind of i feel so old right now i have no idea what you're talking it's it's just like it's it's like it's like um it's 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 not quite EDM. Uh, Glitch Hop is is like uh, just remix, kind of like electronic sounding okay. um, uh, music, and then it, it would infuse um, old school swing. Um, okay. And uh, so th- that's electro swing, <laughs> and so it's like this. It was a fun idea of like, the, like time travel, something super fu- futuristic with something old school, and. Okay. Um, we use that as in transitions and stuff. And so those, those highly theatrical elements went over really well. And I think, um, got the cast really excited to present the show. Um, and were some of the things that people comment on and really, really liking after the show as audience, I, I know that there was a woman that came to see the show as a general audience. Um, and afterward I just asked her, uh, what she thought of the show. And she was like, I thought it was so great. And there were times when I was laughing and I didn't even know why. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, That's man. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing. That is probably one of the coolest compliments I've ever heard in my life. That is yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And and because there, like, there's really like three group game elements of the show and they're like five minutes long mm. each max uh but they're they're super absurd and surreal and that's where that clown element comes in and uh yeah. ca- kind of like controlled chaos uh comes into play and those are the moments that she was talking about the, bu- the bulk of the show still like a half hour's worth of the show was the scene work um 
but uh, I, I think that that having those moments where you didn't quite know what was going on but were still yeah. so entertaining are exactly what led me to be like, it is like being on psychedelic drugs in a theater experience, you know? <laughs> Just confusing yeah. You're joy. You're Laser Zeppelin. <laughs> All right. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, go ahead. Oh, no, where were you going to go? Uh, I was just going to say um, another one uh, that uh, stuck with me, you know, uh, I, I, th I think it might have been so somebody told me afterward they were they were like, uh, you know, so and so walked out of the show and was like, didn't say they liked it or not, but said, well, that was a very James show. And um, <laughs> I would take that as a compliment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or yeah. whatever it is. And, and we had a conversation with yeah. Jen Hansen about um, finding your voice and stuff. And it was one of those moments that like um, was like, you know, my, my, my hope is that it's not about pride or uh, uh, patting myself on the back for a show or whatever. But hearing that like, oh, it's a James show gives me a window into like, what am I doing? Like, like what is the out, what's the outside perspective of, of what these mm -hmm. types of shows have in common. And so, uh, if nothing else, it made me go cool. All right. Th th this is presenting something that is like in my voice. And that made me feel like I was on the right track to, uh, uh, yeah. getting the ideas in my head out in a, in a way that, that, that rings true to me. Okay. That's cool. Now, after this run, I know you've, you've taken this, you've done this forum in other places and you've done it with different casts. Uh, what was that experience like? Um, so, yeah, I, 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 when I got to New York, I really wanted to try doing the Elastic Time Canon here. And um, I, ended up with a really great group of people, very talented improvisers who were also really willing and, and intrigued to work on this kind of project. And I uh, was very lucky to have uh, people who are in New, in New York City <laughs> for some dude that's just showing up and being like, I'm going to run a show. It's an, an indie yeah. show. And like, uh, what's the theater s scene like? <laughs> I don't even know what I'm doing in the landscape yet. And I'm like, can can you guys commit to this highly demanding show? And uh, people were willing. And we ended up doing like, cool. I, I, I think, five weekends of rehearsals where we did like uh, five hour rehearsal sessions on like Saturday or Sunday um, from like 930 to 1 p.m. or something like that. And um, with a group of people that I didn't really know that well, uh, wow. you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's one thing to ask that from your friends, but <laughs> almost stranger. Yeah. Total strangers. That's, yeah. That's wild. Totally. Yeah. And of course, Julia was there and James Serini yeah. was with the cast uh, for oh, a stretch okay. as well. And so I had some familiarity. I knew Adam Payne from uh, Camp Utopia. Um, so I had the, like uh, a, a core team of, of uh, some people from home and then also like a thread of meeting people. But, um, yeah, I, 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 we, we did, my goal was like, can we, can we do 24 hours worth of rehearsal in six weeks? And, um, with the priority of it being full attendance, uh, more attendance as a, ver as opposed to more meetings. Um, and then we did, um, I was just building up to a, a, a one-off show, but I was like, let's try to pack the house and blah, blah, blah. And, um, I think that the big difference was that it was prescriptive, that I was um, uh, relying on my ability to take a show that already had a structure and hand it off and, and teach it and just like kind of plug and chug the same thing. And that um, one that uh, um, there's still more work to be done than just the objective form itself in the spirit of how to approach it and um, the possibilities of the more subjective elements um, those clown aspects and whatnot. Um, and I was also taking away the experience from that new cast of building a show as a committee and just instead kind of telling them what we did the last time and expecting them to take it on the same way this time. And I think I could have been more open to, um, letting it grow in different ways, 
uh, with a new cast um, yeah. and try, trying different um, adaptations. Oh, that'd be but, cool. But we, we did have a group that, that was together for like uh, six or seven months and um, maybe even a little bit longer than that. And we went to like the DC Improv Festival and um, we played out in uh, Philly. Um, and it was a really great experience. Like where we got to the show with that group was was uh, still really exciting. Um, I, I I don't think it, it could stick because one I didn't have the resource of a theater where, that I could guarantee a weekly run. Um, and without that, I felt guilty asking for yeah. more commitment to rehearsals and to keep progressing the show from where we got to in uh, th- that that heavy upfront rehearsal process and then to be like okay well now let's still be, be doing it once a week and it's like what's the payoff if, if you're doing you know once a month shows and spending all this money in new york city to like rent space and um everybody's got their different commitments and stuff and so it, it kind of fell apart and i uh you know i'm very happy to have collaborated with the people that um we did and uh that I gave a run at it, but um, if I were to, the only thing I would change about the rehearsal process, the schedule of it, is once we do get the show up on its feet after the initial rehearsal process, I think that the best way to keep a intensive rehearsal demanding show going um, long term is not to, to rehearse nonstop every week, but instead do like an eight weeks on, eight weeks off kind of approach. Um, and... I think that, that that would make sense whether or not you have the resources uh, to have like free rehearsal space or if you're paying for it or whatever. It's I think it's, it can just be like really fatiguing um, to be constantly rehearsing a show. But I and I also think that like, you know, once a month upkeep is probably not enough. I think that you need to like go in chunks to tighten things up and, uh, you know, make progress if you're going to make progress or maintain the quality you're at um, in sprints and then take a big break and then come back for another rehearsal sprint that's how i would do it it's just it's it's tough with the additional of course uh, yeah demands yeah. and limitations especially in this thing where we can't afford to pay anybody and you know it's it's all volunteer so yeah you, you gotta be respectful of their time and you know yeah yeah put a carrot at the end of the trail as yeah. they say hey, yeah <laughs> You know those people. <laughs> Where's the yeah. Where's the well, carrot? Did you at have the end a carrot trail? at the end of the trail? No, <laughs> I don't have a theater. It's of no carrots. Go. All trail. Uh, <laughs> yeah, totally though. We're yeah. Uh, uh, Mike Mike one time phrased it as uh, building a staircase to nowhere. <laughs> pretty much. I, I like that one. I'm going to steal that. Yeah. Uh, oh, now. If I remember correctly, I, didn't Doug uh, coach a, a troop uh, to do Elastic Time Cannon? Doug Doug kept the show going um, on a monthly basis after yeah. I, I moved um, and took over as director. And then um, uh, I think also started working with it as a shorter the, – the show itself was a 45-minute show, 45 minutes to an right. hour. And um, I think he, he adapted it to be shorter, uh, more like – 25 to 35 minutes um and uh kept a lot of the the same cast added some new people um and i think had some great successes with uh doing that as well um and then with moon monster the uh launch group house team that had its yearly run or one year run uh that doug coached i think one of the last things that they did in their run was work on this form and the concepts uh that came with it yeah, because I would, you know, like you said before, like this kind of form, you don't just learn to form and then jump into it. There's a lot of other skills that you have, a, a lot of mental muscles you have to build up before you can just play. Um, so not not just teaching someone the form, but, but also helping them or for lack of a better term, teaching them how to instruct the form is interesting. And I think Doug would is a great choice because a lot of things you describe, he does naturally like pattern play and stuff like that. I I have played uh, old dog, new tricks with him and that's, he crushes at that game. Yeah. 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 Um, Yeah. So I, I suppose, uh, you know, we can 
uh, I, I can't remember where we're at with time on on this, but uh, the major takeaways for yeah. me on the show, um, I w- one just the simplicity of using short form to develop long form was really exciting. Uh, I guess not simplicity, but like uh, that's that's a pretty simple takeaway, um, but it. it sticks with me in a major way, which is if you're looking to build a show that, that workshop approach of like, let's start with these little pieces and, and elements that I like and just play around with them and uh, keep thinking of um, different applications for them until we get inspired uh, for how it can fit into a bigger thread um, was really a big takeaway that I hadn't gotten from previous shows in the same way. Um, Setting the schedule first is also a huge takeaway. I think that that moving forward, and 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 along with that is the idea that like I I think as a director am more interested in developing shows than I am in working with teams. And it's not that I don't love teams and troops. Um, that I think that's such an important part of improv culture is having a team and a troop and the people that you play with. And whether or not you have a highly structured form or you just kind of go out and montage and you the people define the team um i think that that's amazing but what i'm working on and most interested in is building shows that um live in their own right and uh can have rotating cast and uh can be about a philosophy um uh, as an umbrella to anyone that gets involved with it is it's an opportunity to um, serve a philosophy and uh, meet a challenge. Um, uh, so setting a schedule is the best way to accomplish that. It's like, I, and, and again, it was so hard to not work with some of the people that I did want to work with uh, in the first run of the show. But I think that it was, did end up being necessary in order for us to get the greatest potential out of the show. Yeah, because it's a big commitment. But also... I think you did a fantastic job with casting because, as you said, there there you needed to work with people who trusted each other. And sometimes when you are asked to coach, that's not always the case. So you kind of flipping that over and picking who you are casting, even though it is already like 50 percent of it is already a form troop. That's still, you know, it's still important that you kind of pick your own people when you are asking for a specific want, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, absolutely. And I, I think, uh, I mean, in terms of some of the stuff that I would have done same or differently, one thing, I think that's the way I had to do it is to, is to hand select people. Right. I think that that's just the culture that we, that we were operating out on the time in Metro Detroit. And it's, it, it is a lot of the way that a lot of theaters, uh, that I've interacted with have, uh, run things. Uh, and it makes sense. It's, it's like, <laughs> There's so, you know, there's not always as much institutional structure as, as uh, you might want in improv. Right. Um, and when there is, sometimes it's to the detriment of uh, creating really cool stuff. Um, so yeah. it's one way to do it. I think if I, if I were to do it again, I would uh, want to find a way to, to hold auditions and uh, like a workshop audition where we would like run the workshop of some of the exercises and... Um, uh, but but give people an opportunity to, to get involved uh, and see what yeah. happens with the because, again, if it's not about the people um, as much as a as a indie team is um, and I'm setting the schedule first to serve the show, um, I should also put out a open call for uh, anyone who can get involved and potentially be the one to help the show most. Yeah, that would be nice. Yeah, and it would I, be I like nice. How, yeah, <laughs> it would be nice. It would be nice if if we had the resources to always audition. Um, unfortunately, we don't always have that you know, available. Uh, and I yeah. wish we did because because you do like you said at, at the beginning of this interview. Um, there's a lot of at least and I'm, I'm only speaking for Detroit, uh, and uh, but I've seen this you know in, in different festivals, so going to different cities, uh, there are so many troops that are. The same five people plus one or minus one. Yeah. So even just the opportunity to mix that up so the, the individuals can grow would be nice. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah and, so. and I think that that is also part of um, like a side effect that I didn't really think about or in, uh, go in. Maybe maybe I did have some of this in mind, but but the, the show kind of like demonstrated a proof of concept that like if you if you that, that one um, a lot there are people that are eager to be challenged artistically yes. in improv and improv can a lot of the time feel like a kind of loosey goosey chill um, art form, but especially in burgeoning communities uh, that are having that happen of, of like all this loose energy and, and whatnot, like you can be a lightning rod to be like, okay, let's see how far we can take that uh, uh, a willingness and interest in challenge and uh, elevating your goals. Um, and, and the, and the side effect of that too, is, is that when, when we launched the show that there were people like students and, um, other performers in the community that, uh, were like, wow, that really raised the bar for me or like, um, got me excited and inspired to do something similar or, um, or whatever it is. It, it was this nice right. side effect of like, oh, wow, it, it can put out a challenge to the community too of, of like, of like, oh, what about this? Um, and right spark something in other people um as well well you said something really interesting earlier about you know you get to a point in rehearsals if something becomes hard and everybody's not getting it or it's just like you know we, we have tempted this 10 or 15 times and it's just not working that we should give it up and rather than leaning into the wind we just stand still let it blow us over and then we kind of just relax on our laurels um i i do like the concept of like I want to do this because it's hard rather avoid the difficulties and the uncomfortableness of, of the creation creative process. Yeah. So. And I think that that's so for, uh, important is, is, is the challenge. And, and even like built into the show was, was this idea that like the, the thing that we're hoping to do to execute, which is impressive, uh, uh this, uh, higher skill level of, um, the working memory and being able to repeat lines on that sort of pattern. Um, the, it's it's designed in such a way where you know it's going to fall apart no matter how good you get at it. Um, there there's a limit, a human limit to how perfectly you can execute it. And we were also leaning into right. that. And I think that that's a metaphor for people's personal paths and for the goals of a of a show too. Is is like it's not about being perfect. It's about getting better and about challenging yourself yeah. to grow. There's no there's no end destination. It is a lifelong thing that <laughs> that, well, that you do. Well, it's almost a catch twenty two. If you do do it perfect, then you're not doing it fast enough, or you're not pushing yourself. If you yeah, if, yeah, <laughs> or you so, add another rule. You're like like yeah, okay, I I, I got it done. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, um, yeah. And I guess the last the last last thing that I would say because I think it's the uh, the kind of um, trade off of of all that is that uh, I I would in doing it again make sure to celebrate the success and accomplishments of the yeah. show better. People are working very very hard on those types of projects that that involve the degree of challenge, and uh, you have to take time to just revel in um, the. Uh, meet rising to the challenge and being like, wow, nobody, nobody, we, we are not doing this for money. We are not doing this for fame. Yes. We are not doing this for anything else than our personal desire to challenge ourselves and grow and be creative. And, and we did what we set out to do. And I think that that deserves uh, much more um, uh, time to celebrate uh, than I gave it in, in either run of the Detroit or the New York iteration. So uh, I think that's important too and something that I'm working on as a director. It's awesome. It's awesome. That That is uh, the Elastic Time Canon. And uh, yeah, thanks for thanks for letting me uh, rail off on it. Is rail off no, a word? No, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you rail off, uh, hopefully at the end there's a carrot yeah, on that yeah. path. <laughs> so cool uh, no this is a good talk this, I, like, I was always very interested in this and I don't think we just had, had the opportunity because most of the time we're talking about what we're going to do before the show or after so it's great that's it for this episode and we'll catch you next time on Improv FAQ 